I'm going to talk a little bit about stress reduction techniques such as meditation, deep breathing, or yoga, because stress hormones can really impact blood sugar levels and those practices can bring them down. And stress management is really crucial for maintaining healthy blood sugar levels and overall well-being. When you're stressed, your body releases stress hormones like cortisol, which then lead to elevated blood sugar levels. So I'm gonna share a little bit more about this relationship between stress and blood sugar, along with a list of simple ways to manage stress every day. And I know I say simple and I'll say it in little air quotes because I know that sometimes um, life throws us some pretty hard curveballs. You know, sometimes we're caring for other people, whatever kind of stress we have. So I don't want to say simple in um, a really nonchalant way, but it is important. The more stress we have, the more we kind of embed habits that can bring our stress levels down um, during the day, right? When we are stressed, we are stuck in fight or flight, okay? When we're stressed, we're stuck in, and that's high cortisol, and that's high stress hormones, and that is gonna have a huge impact on blood sugar. It's sort of like the foundation. It's like, oh, the stress happened first, and then everything else followed. We have more stress, we have more cravings, right? We have more stress, we have more glucose circulating. So the more we can, like, build the muscle of rest and digest or the parasympathetic mode that kind of brings our stress levels down, the more we are going to be able to um, lower our stress response and lower our blood sugar. It really does go hand in hand. So when you're stressed, your body releases cortisol and adrenaline as part of the fight or flight response. These hormones can cause a temporary increase in blood sugar to provide quick energy to deal with whatever that perceived threat is. And again, it could just be something we're ruminating on that hasn't even happened yet and might not even happen. So prolonged or chronic stress can lead to consistently elevated cortisol levels, which may disrupt insulin function and contribute to insulin resistance. Over time, this can increase the risk of type two diabetes. So let me share some ways to manage stress on the daily, every day. And the first one is deep breathing. So practicing deep breathing exercises can activate the body's relaxation response. So try inhale deeply, try inhaling deeply through your nose for a count of four, holding for a count of four and exhaling th slowly through your mouth for a count of eight. So if you've Four in, hold for four, and out for eight. That longer exhale helps you to access your parasympathetic nervous system, okay? And then the other thing is mindfulness meditation. That involves paying attention to the present moment without judgment. Oof, easier said than done, right? Regular practice can reduce stress and improve emotional well-being. So sometimes we have to say, oh, there I am, like not being present and like thinking about things that might happen. Oh, like maybe, you know, for me right now, I'm like, wow, when I look out, <laughs> I can see butterflies on the flowers. I can see, you know, the flowers and the leaves blowing in the wind gently, right? I can think about, you know, my, my surroundings and that's calming versus, oh, I got to go do this thing later. And then I got to do that thing, right? It's like, just be in this moment. Can I be in this moment? And if I'm in this moment, it's like a nice sigh. And that breath with that thought can help me to get there. The other piece around reducing stress would be exercise. So when, we, when physical activity really does release happy uh, neurotransmitters, one of them called endorphins, where our, these are our natural stress relievers. So if you can aim for at least 30 minutes of moderate exercise most days of the week, you're going to be building those happy hormones, those happy neurotransmitters, and that's going to add to calm and just peace and happiness, right? And again, if we can even just like get outside, it just always feels so good. You can kind of get out of your head, out of your little world and like see something bigger than yourself. A lot of people really connect with yoga that combines physical postures, deep breathing, and meditation to reduce stress and promote relaxation, right? 
There's also progressive muscle relaxation, which you could do in your bed, laying down. And this technique involves tensing and then releasing different muscle groups to reduce physical tension. Journaling is another amazing thing when you write down your thoughts and feelings. This can help you to process and manage stress. So try keeping a gratitude journal to focus on positive aspects of your life. Another way to reduce stress is by eating a healthy diet. When you eat a balanced diet with plenty of fruits and vegetables, whole grains and legumes and lean protein and healthy fats, nutrient-rich foods definitely support your body during times of stress. Whenever I'm stressed, I'm like, okay, I am going to be on my A game with my diet. I, and I really try to avoid sugar because I know that I'm like, I'm not even going to go there. I am on my A game. So I encourage you to do the same thing. The other thing when you do have more stress is to make sure you prioritize your sleep and good sleep hygiene. And you want to aim for seven to nine hours of sleep each night to support the body in all the detoxification and rejuvenation and brain draining at night processes that will support you. Because a lot of times when we don't get enough sleep, we're more insulin resistant. We have more cortisol in the morning. So sleep is essential. And the other thing that's really important that we don't want to forget when we are stressed is the social support. So connect with your friends and your loved ones. You know, talk to someone you trust that can provide you with emotional support during stressful times. They can listen to you. They can hear you. They can support you. And, um, you know, and you just know that they're there. And sometimes that friendship, I, I know when I've struggled sometimes with extreme anxiety, um, talking to a friend just brings it right down. So don't forget your friends that are there. And I know sometimes we don't want to bug our friends, but, you know, our friends will listen when we need them. The other thing I have to say, and this is a good one for me, like I got to look in the mirror with this one, is time management. We have to be able to organize our tasks and responsibilities and prioritize what needs to be done. And that can help reduce the feelings of overwhelm. And we have to make sure we carve out time for the things like movement, the things like meal time, right? I, I often have to tell clients like, well, where in your day can you eat <laughs> your breakfast? Or can you eat your lunch? Or can you exercise, right? We have to put those breaks in there because we deserve it, right? Um, we want to limit our caffeine and alcohol. That can make us feel both anxious and uh well both can make us feel anxious we could have like a hangover mixed with anxiety anxiety <laughs> i heard that recently um but both of them can exacerbate stress so if you're stressed cut back on your caffeine you know i'm not saying you have to give it up completely but like you know do a little analysis if you're really overdoing it and that's your main <laughs> liquid and food source for most of the day that's a good thing to check in on because it can, it can heighten our stress, it can disrupt our sleep, and we really need to have those things in moderation. And for some people, it might mean, like, I can't have them at all, right? We have to find that boundary for ourselves. Speaking of that, you know, it's good to set boundaries and learn when to say no to additional commitments or responsibilities when you feel overwhelmed. And as one of my friends uh, said to me once, like, no is a complete sentence, you know, we don't always have to say, no, I can't do it because blah. it's like, no, I, I'm sorry, I can't do that. You know, especially when people are being asked to volunteer and I have to remember sometimes, well, when I volunteer, it's because I volunteer, not because somebody wants me to volunteer. Like, let me make sure that it's going to work for me. And we can't forget to not have fun. Laughter triggers the release of endorphins and that can improve our mood. What do you need to do for that? Watch a funny movie. Spend time with your funny friends that make you laugh. <laughs> Hopefully you have a few of those. And, you know, the other thing, just a reminder, is like get out in nature. So beautiful, especially, I mean, all times of year are beautiful. But, you know, get out and, and see the things, you know, visit a botanical garden, right? Or, you know, go somewhere where you know there's beautiful things. You know, go by a body of water that always brings calm, right? Even if it's just a short walk in a park, whatever it is, but just know that nature has a calming effect on our minds. And when you're there, practice gratitude. 
Take a moment each day to reflect on things you're grateful for. This can shift your focus away from stressors. Remember that stress management, it's a personal journey and different techniques work for different people. I just shared a lot of things. You might be like, oh yeah, that is always a great thing for me. You don't have to do it all, but pick the things that work for you. Experiment with some of these suggestions. Find what resonates for you, but be consistent practicing daily stress reduction techniques. It is can be a game changer. And in this today's stressful world, like we owe it to ourselves to take that action and find what we need to find and take time for ourselves, set boundaries and, and support our physical, emotional, spiritual beings. Thank you for watching. If you have any things that you like to do, I'd love to know. Have a wonderful day and I will see you soon. All right, take care.